You know, Kendra, I'd love to have you on the show, but you've just recently talked about all the things that are new in Visual Studio 2019. So what do we do? Well, there's a lot of stuff that's not new, but people might have missed in Visual Studio. We could talk about that. That's a great idea. Great. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Kendra Havens. Hi. Hey, Kendra. <laughs> It's good to be back. Welcome back on the show. Should I introduce myself just in case? Sure. Okay. I'm Kendra Havens, Program Manager on .NET and Visual Studio. Excellent. That's all I had. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you spend a lot of time speaking and, and showing off and showing off things that are new in the product. Yes. So for we just shipped to Visual Studio 2019, and you, of course, were featured prominently in the launch, and you speak at things like Build, of course, mm -hmm. showing What's new in the product, in the latest version of the product? Yes. Of course, people want to know. Very newest things yes. is definitely what people want to know. But at the same time, we know that there's all kinds of things that have been put in the product previously yes. that people may not know about. Yeah, and sometimes I always want to like bring these up and touch back on things that are just really, really useful that we almost never talk about in all of the newer talks because right. people are so focused on new things. But there's still great productivity tips that I want people to know. So I'm excited we're doing an episode cool. on them. So we're going to talk about things that are in Visual Studio. Yes. Um, that can help productivity, and they may have been there all along. They may have yes, been introduced to in the while. previous version. Is and there anything that's literally new in 2019? There's all this stuff um, old. Yeah, I believe I will cover some of the Git changes okay. in um, Control Q. Control Q now indexes a lot of um, Git commands, Ooh. so you can search okay. them and it'll pop open your Test Explorer. I'll show that in a second. Um, and like some of these, I just learned about like two weeks ago, even though. They've been in the product for many Ooh. years, and I've worked on the product <laughs> for many years, and I still just don't find them immediately. There's always stuff to learn. So, all right. Yeah. Cool. Should I should I do an apology? Like, sorry no. if you've heard this before, and no. you can mock me if you already have Never. known about these things forever. But why not cover them? No, I think the the rules for having a good show are get good guests, don't do all the Done. talking, oh. and <laughs> never <laughs> mock your guests. Not even a little bit. You can you can tease. I do well with adversity. Okay, should we launch in? Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so the first things I wanted to show. Oh, and first I'll introduce you to my solution. So yes. this is my productivity features app. Um, this is open source. Everyone can go download this. Ah, this actually okay. has um, all of the quick fixes and refactorings um, that we have added in like uh, previous releases. Mm. Nice. Um, so yeah, you can sc scroll through and how to trigger them. So it also contains all of the code that one would need to trigger these, which is sometimes, yeah, what people are trying to find. So like okay. something like wrapping parameters and that kind of thing. Whoop. Whoop. That is the wrong keyboard shortcut. Let's see. Control dot, wrap every parameter. So it just like gives you an example of how to trigger all of these things mm -hmm. and like instructions on where your cursor needs to be because some of them are really contextual. So just kind of a helpful uh, thing. You can get to this by using, it's in Kendra Haven's productivity features on GitHub, or you could use an aka.ms link slash net features 2019. So that'll also take you Fantastic. right to the repo. Okay. So, introduce my repository. The first thing I want to call out are a lot of just general navigation tips. Um, I really love this navigate backward, control minus. Uh, I'm sure you've used this some. Yes. Right? Um, it is just really nice um, to go to wherever your cursor was previously. Um, so, and kind of uh, understand like where were the last times that you uh, were changing code or uh, writing anything. So and how far back will it nice. go? Oh gosh, I don't even know. A lot. Okay. Uh, that actually finished with me. So <laughs> <laughs> it was three, but, but I'm not one, sure. Right? I might have only like just opened right. the solution. Yeah. So okay. I'm not sure. And I can even like do a drop down and go back to where oh. I just was, which is kind of cool. That's cool. So it keeps some navigation history. Maybe it is limited at five. Let's see. Well, five, do, do, do. five is well enough, right? Sure. I'd be happy with it. Let's see. Oh, it keeps going. Excellent. Not sure what the limits are. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, this one is another big one. I have a few things associated with the Solution Explorer. 
So you can sync with your active document. Mm. It is also um, control um, open square bracket S, which is difficult to remember, <laughs> but and difficult to we say. also have this icon right here in the Solution Explorer, and it's another one of those that like, I think this has been there for years, yep. but um, I still get people asking about it on Twitter, so it's fun to call out. So whatever document you have open, I can control open bracket S, and it hops to highlighting that nice. file in the mm -hmm. Solution Explorer. It's also just lovely. So that's sync with um, active document. And you can just uh, like trigger this in a one-off basis, or there's actually a uh, another setting that you can permanently turn on to always track the item that you're on in the Solution Explorer. And is it off by default? Mm-hmm. OK. You're like, why did we do this? <laughs> um, well, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, no, we have good reasons. I mean, we don't well, want things jumping around. There's one of two around. things that happened. One is we asked a lot of users, or, or B, we flipped a coin. <laughs> I'm predicting it was the former. Who knows? <laughs> no, um, so I think this is uh, really helpful. So if I um, select that and then I switch to a different document, mm -hmm. you can see that the highlight also yeah. automatically changed in the Solution Explorer. Right. So, so you might not want all that flickering on this in the Solution yes. Explorer. So. Okay. Yeah, and you can get there again by just track active document. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to uncheck that because I'm actually, I don't want it on all of the time. I don't need that much selection uh, happening all the time. OK, speaking of more navigation, um, I also did uh, learn about this on Twitter from um, one of the people on the, uh, I believe he was on the editor team, but it is alt tick. It opens a special context menu that is different from right click that has really? specifically more editor commands in it. So um, if you forget any of these, like go to complaining block, uh, go to next issue and file, that's like navigating through what errors you have and that kind of stuff, there's navigate backward. Um, I'm going to definitely cover go to last edit location, so, also a really good one. So if you one. right click on that in that spot, what do you get? You get an entire. So if different. I right clicked here, Totally different menu. Oh. This is run tests. We still have like find all references and okay. some some stuff, but the yeah, alt the tick alt tick, <laughs> and that's the tick is the oh what is the other word for that apostrophe? Um, it's the weird apostrophe. <laughs> the tilde. That's no? um, it's on the it? same key as the tilde. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay, you're absolutely right. Um, that's a good way to explain that. So I'm sure it has a name. Tick. We'll use tick. Yeah. Um, what was he doing? I think it was Alt. I think it was Control Tick to open the terminal in VS Code for a pretty long time. Okay. Um, that's how people. Could be. It's that same key. Um, All right. Cool. In case people know. Um, so yeah. So in case you okay, this is another one of my things that I love. Um, so did you know you can right click on a project node in the Solution Explorer and open file in File Explorer? Open the folder. I. I knew there was a, yes, I think I knew that one. So this actually wasn't bound to any command, um, but I went ahead and bound it con to control OO so that it opens up really quick. Um, I had been doing terrible things for like years before I discovered this. So I would like, like try to open, I would have properties open properties all the time. Go find the file yeah, location. Uh, yeah. Which was so silly. So it'd show yeah. up here and I'd do something terrible, like trying to copy this full path. And then I'd try to go over to my, just wasn't a good life. No, that's wasn't a, a good lot life experience switching. for me. <laughs> um, and then it wouldn't do anything, or it tried to open that particular file, so I'd have to like delete the file name to actually go to the folder. Yep. Yikes! It's a lot of Why, work. Kendra? Why would you this be doing be a shortcut this? Shortcut to do that. Your life is so much better, right? So I mapped this shortcut myself, and I can go ahead and show you all how to do that. Um, if you don't have a shortcut right now, it's just open. It, just right click on mm -hmm. any. Um, folder or project, so you can't right click on any of files in general and do this. Oh, okay. Which I don't know, maybe we could fix that. <laughs> um, and it's open folder in File Explorer. So mm -hmm. my next trick is how often are you using a keyboard shortcut or there's a command that you know was a keyboard shortcut and you're trying to find it again? And you're trying I to know find that a lot of people do. Me personally, I don't use that many keyboard shortcuts because it's hard to That's remember okay. them. But That's when one I do, do memorize one, I use it all the time. Excellent. 
Oh yes, like code cleanup. Like control K, control F, control K, control E. I use that yeah. one all the time. Yeah. But I can only me me I can only remember like four of them. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> totally, totally right. So. Um, if you're ever wondering what a particular keyboard shortcut is mapped to, because mm -hmm. like when you trigger it, you're not using it in the right context or it's not doing anything, right. you can always type, you can go to, sorry, tools, options, keyboard, environment keyboard. But remapping them. And you would, can type them. Would make it more, I should actually do that. I should and remap can show. a bunch because then I could do control R1, mm -hmm. right? And my top 10. Yeah, well, and nine, then you know it's always zero. something yeah. in the yeah. um, F keys cool. or whatever. Um, so this is how I know what I've already mapped something to, or if I'm trying to map like, if I'm trying to map something new, mm -hmm. and I want to do something, but I don't want to break an existing key binding, so I just wanted to check like, oh, what's currently using like Control Swift Slash, and it's like, oh, toggle block comment. Ooh, I actually nice. don't want to use that. That's one in the next ones I'm going to show off. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you can always check what a shortcut key is mapped to. Okay. Um, and then we were doing open folder. So this is the open folder and file explorer command, mm -hmm. and I can just search it here. And uh, then I can see what keyboard shortcut it is already bound to. And okay. if I wanted to bind it to a different one, I don't think I will because I'm going to forget it. Because right. <laughs> I really like Control O O, because that's what I figured that out. That would be an awesome but, like, fool's joke. Yeah, so that's how you do it. Machine oh and man! All their shortcuts. Awesome or mean, cruel, <laughs> <laughs> terrible? No, no, it's okay. It's just because my life might re revolve around keyboard <laughs> shortcuts just a little bit. It's tough. Anyway, so have you ever read this text in the Search Explorer? I literally had a bug filed. Oh, sorry, I clicked on it. This control semicolon. Yeah. I had a bug filed. Like, why can't we just jump to that search bar in the Search Explorer? Oh. And why can't we just have a keyboard shortcut that does that? That's a great idea. And we do. <laughs> and it's been there. And I agreed with it. And I was like, yeah, we should add this. And <laughs> eventually, Turns someone um, who knows what's going on in Visual Studio <laughs> got back to me and was like, um, yeah, we've had that for. Uh, forever. Um, so then so, you change yeah, you the bug to improve more. discoverability of right. the existing shortcut. Right. <laughs> and their response was obviously, this is part of the main experience of Visual Studio. Like as soon as you open Visual Studio, the text search solution explorer control semicolon is right there on the screen. <laughs> and you still missed it, Kendra. Um, but it's go. okay. This is why we're talking about it. I'm sure other people <laughs> have been also seen this. Um, cool. Okay, so here's another one that I just want to call out um, specifically for folks who, I don't know, are finding themselves in this situation a lot. So let's say you have a .sln that you're trying to open with Visual Studio, mm -hmm. but you have about 50 versions of Visual Studio installed. And okay. I can actually distinguish between like, if this is 16.0, if this is 16.1, these are obviously previews, but I don't know which preview. One of them is my internal build. For uh -huh. extension owners, one might be their specific version that they are also currently building, and that's just the build they have on their machine. So, just a note, we always order these from oldest to newest. Oh. Um, it kind of makes sense because I have 2017 installed right there in the preview, so you mm -hmm. can kind of see how we're ordering it, but it's just a good way to make sure you don't feel like you have to guess. <laughs> okay. Um, so I really appreciate that. Um, cool. So I think we can move on. So I have some more navigation, some more just helpful stuff. I tried to group these logically. I couldn't find a way because they're all <laughs> just little things. Okay. Cool stuff, more cool, cool stuff. stuff, even more cool stuff. Yeah. That's how I'll So group it. clipboard. You can actually see your clipboard's history. Yes. You've used this? I, I think Mads showed that so I a could. few episodes ago. Oh, good. OK. So I guess I don't need to show a ton of it. But I should have made this in like a quiz form. Like how many of you know what keyboard shortcut you <laughs> <laughs> to access uh, your clipboard history? But yeah, so that's Control-Shift-V, mm -hmm. which I love because it's Control-V is obviously very much already associated with yes. clipboard um, in our minds. So. Good on ya. Um, okay, so this one I actually do demo a lot. Um, it's Control T R, 
which opens the files I've recently had open. Oh. Or rather, just opens a page where I can see the files I've recently had open. Mm -hmm. So it's Control T, and then you just type an R into this um, search box. So normally, Control T is like, yeah, I go to files, members, types, whatever. And we recently added R mm -hmm. for going to recent files, which, again, cool. just super cool. Um, OK, so I'm not sure if I showed Control Shift Backspace, I which is go to last so. edit location. No. So it's a bit different than navigate backward, because that's just, I believe, the last place that I had my cursor. Mm -hmm. But Control Shift Backspace is actually where I last edited code. Oh, cool. Also just super nice to have. So if I add in some spaces there, I can kind of hop around. Nice. Yeah. Um, OK, so this is one I'm sure you probably know. Uh, let's see if I can actually find my string for this. Multi. Let's go next. I had like a nice little, uh, there we go, multi-carat. So multi-carat, do you know the keyboard shortcut? Now I'm going to quiz you. <laughs> No. <laughs> Control Alt click. You can click in multiple places in your editor and add some text oh. wherever you clicked, even if it's on the same line. And if I click out of this, when I Control Z, it'll undo oh, each of the places nice. I had this complicated carrot. And that was Control what? Control Alt click. Control if Alt you click. are a okay. mouse user and you want to do that. Um, if you instead are editing something that has like a lot of things that match it, mm -hmm. you can use Shift Alt Dot to highlight things oh, at the matching carrot, nice. which is also really cool. So if I wanted to change all of these to like suggestions in my editor config, oh. I can just do it. I don't suppose that works in XAML, does it? Um, it is an editor-wide feature, mm, so because that would be cool if you're like decided you wanted to do a different color everywhere. Like over here? Let's see. Styles or something. Well, it won't. Oh, how about after every. Oh, no. Shift Alt. It does. Yeah. Oh, nice. Gosh, doesn't that feel good? Love it. I love on the fly demos. Oh, just saying, I am using an, a preview build right now that's internal. Okay. <laughs> um, I get those all the time. No. Um, so you don't have to. Okay. So that was multi carrot And if you ever forget, I think I do think those um, keyboard shortcuts are really difficult to remember. We do have edit multi carrots Oh, OK. Um, so you can kind of see shift alt dot mm -hmm. and shift alt comma. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. It's pretty nice. Um, we should add control alt click to that, though. Maybe that's somewhere else. Anyway. Mm. It's OK. You get the general idea. multi is really nice. I think I demoed it in like preview at the last build. Mm -hmm. And I demoed it again in more of like a subtle way. We were also just editing the editor config. And we got a lot of oohs from the audience. <laughs> and I mean, I didn't say anything, but it's been there for months. But it's OK. That's OK. Everybody loves this. It yeah. doesn't matter when it arrives. <laughs> it's there now. Definitely. OK, so generally, I just feel like you should know I am a really big fan. I'm becoming more and more of a big fan of the Team Explorer. Mm -hmm. um, when I first inst like started using Visual Studio like five years ago, I was like, I really just need to stick to like the Git command line and Git bash and everything. Oh. That's what I'm really, really comfortable with. But more and more often, they keep adding these little features that are really getting me. I should probably give this feedback directly to the team. Eh, we'll just make an episode <laughs> on it. Um, so if you hit Control Q and you're now typing Git commands, mm -hmm. Um, you can actually find these in the Solution Explorer or in the Team Explorer. So if I just type Enter, it automatically like opens up the Changes tab. Wait, wait, what? Show okay, that again? so Control what Q. Did you just do? Control yeah. Q is like the general big search. Okay. That was like a big thing built and everything. You can do a lot of things, but now if you type Git, it actually has uh, like menu commands that will actually really? open this part. In uh, yeah, in your history or your team explorer. Oh, that is so cool! Right? So if you, it's not bad. Like <laughs> I really like this. That's awesome. So if you know the Git command and now you're in Visual Studio, 
Mm -hmm. not necessarily wanting to be typing the commands, but you know you want to do something that will show you yeah. how in Visual Studio to do it. Yeah, and the great thing oh, is, is like, cool. it is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're geeking out over here. This is a fun episode if only we watch it. Anyway. Um, I never watch these. The great thing is, <laughs> if I type git commit, it doesn't actually do a git commit. I can still like see what all of the changes are currently, and mm -hmm. uh, then like I type a message or whatever, and that's when I would hit commit. So it just opens up the Visual Studio like pane where you would do this thing, and mm -hmm. it doesn't just automatically, which is really nice. Okay, so speaking more in the Team Explorer, um, how many times did I set up very well for this? Yeah. So how many times have you actually made a lot of changes, but then you realize, oh crap, I'm still on master. I meant to branch my code and then do the changes and then make a commit. And then once my branch is good, I'll merge it into master. More than zero, less than 100,000. <laughs> right. Um, so you can actually stash changes super easily. So I'll just stash all of these. Oh, I'll go ahead and save these. Right. I can quickly create a new branch and I'll say my feature branch. Oh, sorry. No space. Why would I be using a space? Get it together, Kendra. Okay, cool. So now I can uh, go back to my changes and I can. One sec. Oh, shoot. Did I forget how to do this already? Sorry, I am super new <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to using this. Do you have to. Do, 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 do. So you stashed them on mass. Oh, there it is. Sorry right in front of me. Oh, okay. Okay, so I want to go ahead and pop these. Right? So now they're all back and now I can just do a uh, first that commit to cool. feature branch. I did not know that. All of that anticipation was planned. I knew where it was the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So it, it ends up in well. this little stashes uh -huh. node and you can just right click nice. on it and pop it. Okay. And like I, yeah, I can do all of this from the command line, but then I'd have to go to the command to line. To the command and line. like, right. honestly, this is just really nice. Also, it's it's way more visual that I can like actually see what changes I'm making. Mm -hmm. And um, before I even do that, if I could actually, maybe I'll just go back to master. Nah, that doesn't really matter. All I really wanted to show was if I've made a bunch of changes in places, um, all across like my code. So let's do like shift alt dot, let's do suggestions, all of that. Like you can see them adding up over here in changes. Right. And I can easily click on these and it can open an ubi diff. Yes. Showing cool. the distinction. Um, another thing on our ubi diff, oh, I think this is just spaces. Let me make like a bigger change and just delete something. Do something like that. There we go. So our um, diff viewer is actually really cool in Visual Studio. Like you get a lot. Um, I believe you get like, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, full intelligence when you're oh. typing while you're still in a diff, nice. which is just cool. So you have all of these editor features. It is just the editor. You could get IntelliCode. You can mm -hmm. actually like debug a test which is just wild. And yeah. if you install pull requests for Visual Studio, um, and it, it's an extension right now, right. super sweet. You can easily um, pull like your coworkers PR and their code onto your machine and you can actually debug their GIF, which is wild. Yeah. I'm not sure. Awesome. <laughs> I'm not sure if we fully planned all of it to work that way, but UbiDiff just does just inherit all of the great editor features mm -hmm. in addition to having this um, like plus and minus changes type viewer. Um, and it just gets all of them. So you still have syntax highlighting and all of that, which is like so much nicer than viewing it in the browser. Yeah, yeah. That is I'm a huge cool. fan of this kind of stuff. Ubi diff. Like, yeah, sorry, I keep saying that. I, I think I guess we just call it a diff viewer. What's the ubi part? Uh, <laughs> uh oh, I'm trying to remember where that came from. Ubiquitous? Could be. Know. Sorry. All right. I I hear the teens talking about <laughs> it and that's why I used it. Okay. Um I think they actually did tell me once in a demo, like, it's okay if you don't um, Just call it, <laughs> call, it's easier to say. call it an ubi diff. Nobody knows what that means. Anyway, yeah, Team Explorer kind of sneaks up on you with how yeah. useful it is. I think they've added a bunch over the past few years. Mm -hmm. And uh, give it a shot, guys. 
I did, and I'm really happy about it. That I was, was very cool. totally like a get command line, get bash um, user, and that's all I wanted to do, but it's nice. All right, one of the super common requests uh, that I get is actually um, how do you, let's say I have a block of code and I want to insert it all the time. Um, can't, can't we have some sort of like refactoring or something pop up that I, I can just input this code block anywhere mm. I want? And that's where I say, do you know what feature I'm going to talk about? Quizzing <laughs> you, sorry. <laughs> I'll take off the pressure. So is this, any, how's this different than a snippet? It's a snippet. Ah! It's a code snippet. Okay. So this is control K X. Oh my goodness. And I just get, thanks. Thanks for letting me put you on the spot. See, this is why I ask you to be mean to me. Well, so that all right, I'm going to be mean. If it doesn't you still happen, can't <laughs> highlight, right click, save as snippet, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's Sorry not about go that. There. You have to Let's like edit XML there. and Let's stuff. Let's not go there. Um, we do have nice like so you can create your own snippets. Mm -hmm. That's another thing we I wanted to call out. We have a lot of stuff built in. Uh, let me like choose one that I want to insert. So it'll just insert um, whatever you. Uh, kind of select there, and it also will have like certain things highlighted. Uh, let's let's do like a test, and yeah, I could just like insert a test mm -hmm. method or whatever. Um, I don't have this using in my code, that's why it's causing an error. But just kind of one of those helpful things. We have a lot of pre-built ones. You can also make make your own with the create a snippet. Not as easily as um, Robert would love us to. <laughs> um, uh, create a code snippet. I wouldn't have been surprised if this auto completed. Yeah, because I've been to this page so often, um, <laughs> trying to link it in, in bugs that people open. So yeah, you still have to kind of write some odd XML, but then you get to trigger like, oh, I want these yeah. certain um, parameters to auto fill, fill, so I can insert my slip snippet, hit tab a couple times, so I can rename and customize it as yep. I want. If you know which fields, um, you're probably going to want to customize. So that's pretty cool. Along the same lines, um, and I really like this one, is surrounds with snippets. So this is, have you used this one no. before? Control K S will uh, surround things like that. So now oh, I have like nice. another for each loop inside oh, of this. That's cool. That's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of want to like do this more. I'm looking for places where it won't cause errors, but <laughs> Control KS again, so I can, you know, create a region, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Um, so I think that's actually that's a super helpful one because people are constantly doing that. Or we even yeah. have like if statements. Uh, that's gonna be there. We go. It's yep. just Lovely. really clean, really fast. Okay. So those are all of the little things that I had. We cool. can move on to preview features if you want. Nope. If we have time. No, let's stop now. Okay. Let's just do stuff that's shipping that's now. That's all you get. <laughs> you can see preview features in other videos. Well, this is all about stuff you should already know about. Yeah. Or that I should have already known <laughs> <go>. about. <laughs> we'll put the blame I on like me. I like that. <laughs> it's good. Cool. These cool. are awesome. Well. That's so we I will, uh, in the show notes, we'll list all the things you showed. Uh, which is great that you took notes, so <laughs> we can easily do that. I already have that. them written down. We're Excellent. Good. Yeah. And all of these things are shipping today, and have been many have been in the product for quite some time. Yeah, the little cool. things that you didn't know about. We should do more of these. Yeah. Let's do more of these. Okay. All right. Thanks for having me on awesome. in the first place. This Thank you. Fun. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.